Welcome to Microsoft Build 2017. Uh, my name is James Clark. I'm a program manager on the developer uh, platform team. And my name is Peter Feltz, and I'm a program manager on the same team. And we're here today to talk to you about high DPI in Windows, and specifically some of the investments we've made in the Creators Update. Uh, so Peter, do you want to kick us off by giving us a little bit of history and setting a little bit of context? Yeah, perfect. Let's, let's uh, do that. Let's talk about some context. So first thing, James, what I'm here to talk about today is about your desktop apps. Uh, high DPI problems that desktop apps face, and by desktop apps, I don't mean UWPs. UWPs don't have this class of problems. I'm talking about things like raw Win32 applications or WinForms applications, you, you, your, your classic uh, desktop so applications. So your classic message, message loop-based applications. Got yes, it. exactly. Good old message loops. And uh, the type of thing we're talking about is the problems that these applications face. Uh, today, you, applications, desktop applications are being used on displays and in ways they were never designed, the frameworks were never designed to be used for. And that leads these applications to be blurry or size too big or too small. So you may have been you know, happily earning lots of money from your amazing application that you released you know, mm -hmm. a few years ago and suddenly you're having problems with it. Exactly. You've got an application, it's your baby, you worked on it for years, and then suddenly uh, you get bug reports from customers that your application's blurry or it's sized, it's too big or too small. And you're thinking, no, it's not. Uh, my, my application's fine. But then you dig a little deeper, you peel the onion, and you find out that these problems started after they got a high DPI display, a 4K monitor, or a high DPI laptop. And, and so we've been seeing, I know, sort of a, a huge trend in the marketplace of, of, you know, kind of almost like an arms race, you might say, in exactly. terms of manufacturers wanting to increase the, the DPI. Exactly. And I don't think this trend is going away. There's gonna, going to be high DPI displays. In fact, uh, I expect that high DPI displays will be the norm. Yes. And everybody, almost everybody has a low DPI display, a standard DPI display on their desktop. And what happens is that thing will last forever. And people will buy a new laptop that comes with a high DPI display. And now they're trying to use it in conjunction with a low DPI display. Got it. So uh, DPI is one thing that also that I want to talk about is that DPI support, per monitor DPI support, has been improving in Windows since 8.1, and we'll go into that in more detail. Awesome. Well, why don't we start off just by looking at some of the problems that, that, that we're experiencing? Sure. So what I've got here is a screenshot of a uh, per, bunch of per monitor applications on a, com, coming from a device that had a low resolution, and I moved them to an external monitor that had a high DPI. So imagine we're talking about a a uh, standard PC with a 4K display connected to it. And the type of things you see in this configuration are, you see uh, some applications are sized incorrectly. They're just too big or too small. And uh, here you see PowerPoint and Skype for Business being, being too small. Then you also see some applications that are just blurry. So what happens is Windows will take these applications and recognize that they're not, they're not scaling to the right DPI and will just bitmap stretch them. So now they're they're the correct physical size, but they're blurry. Because okay. you know, you take a bitmap, you stretch it up, what happens? Right. It's gonna be blurry. And then another class of problems you see is just things in Windows that are wrong, uh, such as your, your desktop icons being too small, or your, uh, some text or a tool tip that pops up way too big or way too small. And these are small things, but we hear an awful lot from users that they really sort of disrupt the, the workflow and they really kind of just make the experience very painful. And so one of the things we really wanted to focus on in the creators update of Windows 10 is really just, you know, focusing on some of these smaller things, focusing on really polishing and working on the mm -hmm. craftsmanship of Windows. Yeah, James, and uh, I'm very happy to say that many of these things, especially the ones I'm showing here, have been fixed in the creators update. Awesome. So, so that's some, some context on the problem. So how are we tackling these? Like what's the, sort of the approach that we're using to go after and tackle some of these problems? Sure, we're taking a couple of approaches. So let's talk about that. Uh, one of the things we're doing is improving Windows support for automatic DPI scaling. Today, Windows will uh, take your application bitmap and just stretch it up or stretch it down. And that results in things being blurry. So we're investing in figuring out if there is better ways that we can do that DPI stretching. Can we perhaps make the text crisper or not? And in the creators update, we saw the first introduction of that t functionality where GDI-based applications will now scale crisply natively without being recompiled. And the te what, what that means is that the text is now crisp on whatever monitor you're on, which is pretty so, cool. So for classes of app where, you know, d developers, you guys out there may have already, you know, kind of shipped and, and moved on and, and you don't really want to invest a, a ton, ton of new time and effort in this. Th these are kind of mitigations that really help the system actually take care of the problem. Right. Uh, 
ultimately what you need to do, the best thing to do is to update your application to scale natively because magic GDI scaling where we, where we scale GDI content, it won't help for bitmaps but it will at least help to make the text crisper. So it's really intended for things, for cases where there's an application that will never be updated. Yes. Uh, but the best thing to do is to update your application using new APIs and new functionality to DPI scale. So that leads us to the second category of applications, where applications that are under desktop applications that are not UWP, that are acti under active development. For those applications, we're looking at the blockers, the things that are preventing you from updating your application and adding that support to Windows. So for example, uh, we need or you need uh, WinForms to handle automatic DPI scaling or, or have per monitor support. So that's something we looked at and we added the initial functionality for that in um, the creator's update. Yeah, and we've heard an awful lot of feedback from Win WinForms users out there. So we know, uh, we, we hear your pain and we, yes, know, we know that you care. And the third, third major bucket that I see is, in what we're doing is we're putting you as an end user in control. So there's often cases where you have an application that is just not DPI scaling properly. And you know that if it was DPI scaling a different way, or if Windows would bitmap stretch it, it would at least be usable. An example of this is when you have an application that tells Windows it's, it's DPI aware but doesn't scale, and on a high DPI screen it gets to be super, super tiny. Well, you might need that application to be the correct size, at least blurry, but the correct size. And in the creator's update, there are now end user uh, settings that you can do on a per application basis to make that application scale the way you want it to, or at least that, choose, you're telling Windows how to scale it. That sounds really awesome. Cool, so why don't we just walk through and look at some of the, the, these in a little bit more detail and tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what have we been doing kind of release over release and what are the things that are really important to focus on now? Sure, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, the initial support for DPI, per monitor DPI awareness, which is really, where you tell, your application tells Windows, hey, I understand the concept of per monitor support, per monitor DPI, that the DPI can change and, and I'll respond to that. That's called per monitor DPI awareness and that's what we want you to update your applications to, to do. Well, that was introduced in 8.1 and since 8.1 we've been steadily increasing the amount of support that Windows offers for running in that mode and in the creator's update, that's where we saw the most updates with some really cool functionality. And uh, I'm gonna, um, give a little demo of that to Great, show you what yeah. you can do. Lovely. So this is a Win32 application that you can download from our GitHub today. It is a raw Win32 application with um, dialogues from create dialog and you know create window calls, message loops, all that, all that stuff. And what you're seeing here is a, is a dialog. This is running in a new DPI awareness mode, which is part of the creator's update, which we call per monitor version two. And per monitor version two gives you a lot of cool niceness for uh, per monitor DPI support. So, so the DPI mode is something that a developer intentionally kind of picks and selects. And along with that mode is a set of behaviors the system gives. And what you're saying is there's a great new mode that offers a bunch of new capabilities. Exactly. And it's hard to understand what these different capabilities can do. So I wrote this uh, sample application to show what these different modes will give you when running in different, ver different modes or different versions of Windows. So what this application does is it opens the same window in all, all the different modes. So you can see quickly in, on, on your computer what, what is offered and what's not. That's really helpful. So for example, uh, this, as you can see on my screen, this is a dialog and it is rendering crisply on my high DPI screen because it is automatically being dialog scaled, but being scaled by Windows. And I will move this application over to my low DPI screen and you can see that it's also crisp. It's not being downscaled, it's re-rendering at the native DPI. Now I'm gonna take this guy back and open him, open, cr uh, click on each of these buttons. The first button I'm gonna click on opens a window in unaware mode. This is the default mode for a Win32 application. It says, I don't know anything about DPI. So and when, this is kind of the oldest mode, I guess. This is the oldest say. mode, exactly. This is pre-Vista. Right. And when you run in this mode, you're rendering at 96 DPI. You're re you think the world is small, 96 DPI. And you can see on this monitor that this guy is blurry. And if I zoom in, you can see that Every, all, all the text is blurry and when I move this guy over, he looks crisp because this is a low DPI screen behind me. So now I'm gonna run the same window and I'm gonna run it in what we call system aware mode, which is uh, where you tell Windows, hey, I understand DPI, but only the concept of one DPI. And this was sort of circa Windows Vista, I see. I think this think. was Windows yeah. Vista time. So frame. this was like the first time that we really added any API support for DPI awareness, and it was like, you know, I can handle DPI as long as there's only ever one exactly. high DPI. Which value. made sense at the time, but, Absolutely. but 
to my point earlier, now these computers are being used in ways, these applications are being used in ways they were never, the frameworks were never designed for. So you see here that this application knows that it's 192 DPI. It picks up on this higher DPI. And when I move the application over, it is being downscaled. So it still thinks that the world is 192 DPI, or what we call 200 DPI. Now I'm going to open the same application window again, but I'm going to run it in per monitor mode. Now this is Windows 8.1 era per monitor. This is the initial per monitor mode. And you can see it understands that it's in per monitor mode. Uh, text looks, looks crisp. If I click on the file menu, things are rendering as I would expect. But now that I move it to the other monitor, you're going to see where the wheels kind of fall off. Now look at the, uh, look at the file menu and the edit menu. And you can see how ridiculously large they are. They're still rendering as if they were on the primary monitor. And these controls are too big. Look at the, the um, scroll bars. And when I open the system dialog, Huge. pretty much takes up the whole screen. So that was initial per monitor support. So some things are better, but there's some things that are really that the developer has no easy control of fixing in, in, this, in this version. In this 8.1 mode, you, uh, right. unless you're going to draw all the non-client area yourself, the title bar, et cetera. Which you can do. It's just a lot of extra It's a work. lot of work. Right. And that's why you, you want Windows to do that kind of stuff for Absolutely. you for the mo most part. So now I'm gonna, going to run the same application window in uh, anniversary update mode, where now we can scale non-client area. So you can see how Windows support is improving. So this is the previous release of Windows. And you can see that in this release, in this version, the non-client area is scaling. The scroll bars, menus are scaling. It understands the DPI has changed. But check out these uh, c common controls, these radio buttons and checkbox. They're still rendering as if they were on the primary monitor. So still some room for, imp for improvement. Still some there. room for improvement. So again, and I open this dialog, huge. Now I'm going to run this in uh, creator's update mode. So the latest and greatest stuff latest now. Latest and greatest, yeah. Exact same, exact same code, doing nothing different, just running under in, in this new mode. And you see the file menu, the non-client area scaling, and the common controls, Win32 common controls, they are rendering at the native fidelity for the screen that they're on automatically. And then the, the further bitmaps that are drawn. You still need to send them a new font and resize them, because that's Win32. But uh, in the creator's update, they are automatically bitmap scaling. And again, what, what I'm showing here is automatic dialogue scaling. So here, this is a system dialogue. I didn't change one line of code, but I, because I'm running in this per monitor version 2 mode, Windows automatically picks up on that and scales the dialog for me. That's awesome. So essentially, from a developer point of view, you changed a single manifest setting or you, you made a single API call to set the mode. And in, in, all of the, in, in either case there, we, we ended up with this, with this much better result, essentially. Uh, yeah, pretty much. OK, so that is uh, the per monitor version 2 scaling. One more thing I wanted to show is that first window was unaware, completely DPI unaware. And I mentioned how we introduced uh, GDI scaling to enable crisp text in unaware applications and GDI-based applications. Well, you as a developer, you can also benefit from GDI scaling by turning, setting a manifest setting, and that will turn on. That'll mean that that will result in any GDI-based content, content in your application that's running unaware will automatically be uh, DPI scaled so that its text is crisp. So if, if, you, if you built your app a few years ago and you know that you were using GDI, uh, you don't want to make a big investment in the app. What you're saying is, again, you can make a fairly minor change to manifest or maybe just a single mm -hmm. API call. And suddenly, although the majority of content will still be bitmap scale, the text itself will actually use a sort of essentially a vector-based scaling algorithm. And so the text itself should be much, much right. better. And at the end of the day, the text is what is usually most important Absolutely. For, for end users to see. Right. So and again, this GDI scaling won't work for every application, and it, it, especially if you have other content in your application, it won't. It'll just bitmap stretch that up. But it's really pretty cool when it does work for uh, GDI-based content. So let's see. So here, what I'm doing is I'm just uncommenting a manifest setting to enable uh, GDI scaling, and I'm running the same application again. And on this monitor, my high DPI monitor, I'm going to open that same unaware window again. And you can see it, it still thinks that the DPI is 96 because it's still running in DPI unaware mode. But behind the scenes, we are bitmap, we are not bitmap stretching it, we're, we're re-rendering the text at fidelity. And if I zoom in here, you can see that this text is very, very crisp on my high DPI monitor. So we essentially render the text at 200 DPI within the application.
And this is something that we're actually using in Windows itself in some of the applications. Correct. So in the creators update, some of the older inbox parts of Windows, such as Device Manager, have this feature enabled. And end users can go into XE uh, to the application compatibility properties on any XE, any XE outside of uh, System32, and can turn this on on a XE per XE basis and see if it, if it works for them. Yeah, and we, I think we've also had quite a lot of feedback uh, from the user base of you know, a whole bunch of, of classes of different apps that, that can kind of essentially get much better behavior with this mode. So uh, that's what we've done up, in, up to the creators update. But I also want to talk about some other things that we're working on. Yes, let's do that. So this is, uh, these are things that we're working on to further improve DPI support in Windows for desktop applications. Now, I can't say what version of Windows these will be released in, but I wanted to give you a sneak peek into some of the things we're working on. And is this everything we're doing, Peter? Or, or? <laughs> of course not. This is not everything this we're doing. This is a sneak peek. Some of the, the exciting uh, things that are, that are coming up. Great. So I mentioned uh, in the creator's update we have GDI scaling. And this is a, a, our attempt to improve the way Windows will automatically uh, DPI scale applications so that we're not just bitmap stretching. And, right? and this is again just to remind uh, to remind this is for apps that are essentially not being updated to really take advantage of some of the new APIs. These are kind of older apps that are kind of you know they've been compiled and we want right. to try and have the system do something to automatically. Right. Fix it's them. always best to update your application using these new APIs so that everything renders crisp and you can ha you can control the experience. But for those applications that will never be recompiled for various reasons, this is an attempt by Windows to make those look better on today's hardware. Phenomenal. So GDI scaling in the creators update was limited to raw GDI. And in the, what we're looking at for future releases is increasing the scope of automatic, that automatic scaling. And what we're working on now is GDI plus scaling. So if you have an application that uses GDI plus APIs to draw text or graphics, those can render natively on um, any DPI. So uh, basically, essentially becoming a per monitor aware application for free. So another area that we're improving in is our per monitor DPI uh, documentation. A lot of our documentation on MSDN, if you, once you sit down and you try to update your application to be per monitor, it's difficult to find the right documentation. And the reason for that is a lot of our per monitor documentation was, was published in the 8.1 timeframe. And we're going to invest in making that more relevant to, to you today when you're using these new APIs. Another cool thing we're working on is a really, really big pain point that our customers feel, you feel, I feel, because I use uh, high DPI hardware. It's where you take your, your high DPI device and you dock it to a low DPI monitor or a, a monitor of any other different DPI. And the majority of desktop applications in that case will be blurry on the secondary monitor because the DPI is different. And these are applications that aren't suitable for GDI scaling, have not been updated by the developer to handle DPI scaling properly. But unfortunately, this is the majority of, of desktop, legacy desktop applications. Yeah, so you may be running a bunch of UWPs that are doing the right thing. You may be running Edge, you may be running the, you know, modern OneNote, et cetera. But, but, it, but there's a class of apps like maybe Visual Studio or, or apps that haven't been updated that are they're gonna, gonna be blurry. Exactly. And uh, for those applications, we're, we're wondering, is there anything we can do to make them better. And what's interesting about the, that class of application is that they ask the system what the DPI is and they never listen to a DPI change. They just assume the DPI is the same throughout the whole Windows session. And the only way to get those applications to render crisply is you have to log out of Windows completely and log back in. And the reason for that is that Windows doesn't change the system DPI that it tells these applications until you log out and log back in. Wow, so, so even though I've got Edge and it's fine and there are all these applications that are fine, the mm -hmm. only way I can actually fix that, that list of apps that are not fine is to literally log out and go through session teardown, et cetera. Very painful. Very, a full interruption to your work. Like you said, uh, there might only be one application that I'm interested in, in having render crisply, and, but I've got 10 other applications open with documents open. You have to interrupt all that work log out and rehydrate all those applications. So it's a, it's a huge pain point. And we hear this feedback a lot. Why on earth do you have to log out? You know, this is painful. Right. So one of the things we're investigating is if we can take that architecture where Windows tells an application the system DPI and doesn't change it during the, the lifetime of the user session and try to make it a, be a per process basis. What that would mean is that if once you get into the situation where you're docking and undocking, you don't have to log out completely. All you need to do is close your process and relaunch it, and that process will pick up the new system DPI. So it's not a perfect solution. It doesn't make the application magically be a per-monitor application, but it takes us from a situation where you have to exit out of everything, full stop interruption to your work, 
to you only have to relaunch the application. Right. So if there's if you if you're running ten different apps and there's only one of them that's badly behaved, mm -hmm. that's the only one that has to be closed. Yeah. So awesome. I'm looking forward to uh, demoing yeah. that in future. I can't wait. Future, uh, I really can't uh, wait. Videos. Great. So let's let's see the other demo then. Okay. So uh, I'm going to show GD our prototypes for GDI plus scaling. What we've got, what I've got here, which I'm going to show, is an application which is uh, raw GDI plus application. And on the right here, I've got this raw GPI, GDI plus application, which is rendering at 96 DPI, and it's blurry on my monitor because this is because this is a high DPI monitor. And on the left, I have the exact same application running in this new mode, not recompiled, just the exact same application. And when I zoom in here, you can see clearly that the text is crisp, the GDI plus drawn graphics are crisp. So yeah, we're hoping again, we're hoping to. Increase, steadily increase the amount of frameworks that we can automatically DPI scale where applicable, and eventually this would be a uh, pretty good solution for applications that aren't recompiled. And, and I think this will also actually help Windows Forms developers as well, because I think some aspects of Windows Forms are using. GDI yeah, that's plus. what we're looking into. That we're looking into whether this can help Windows Forms, because as yeah. you said, some of it is GDI plus based. Great, awesome demo. Thanks. So, um, what, what are some of the things that that folks can go? Look at and kick the tires of and play with. Like, why don't we talk through some of those? Sure. So, as I mentioned, the the application I showed today is available on GitHub, and uh, it's a good application to run so that you can kind of ramp up on the different DPI awareness modes and see. Uh, oh, this is how I get the non-client area to scale on a certain version of Windows, or here's how I use per monitor version two to get all this good automatic uh, scaling. So, download that and check it out. And uh, there's a couple of blog posts. There's a creators update blog post which came out recently to talk about the new DPI uh, support in more detail. There's an anniversary update blog post where we introduced subprocess DPI scaling, which is one of the features used in that example I showed Great. in order to get the different windows up on the same screen. And as you mentioned, we're investing in the documentation over time. And so for now, these blog posts are great kind of like pointers into the documentation because they show the best practice, the, the kind of contemporary right. way of calling the APIs. They're a, good, they're a good resource to ramp up on this stuff until the documentation is, right. is where we want it to be. And uh, there is a video on Channel 9, which is linked here, which is, uh, talks about the WinForms per monitor support. Excellent. So for more details on that, uh, there's a great video. And I mm -hmm. think also there's links to feedback. So if you're using the Windows Forms uh, per monitor DPI support, there's, there's a great place where you can go comment and, and add feedback if there's things that, you, that you'd like to see it doing uh, next. And as always, we want feedback. We want to know what works, what doesn't work, what do you like, what would you like to see. So please tweet us at uh, Windows UI with that uh, feedback about DPI support. Yeah, and if you have friends that are having trouble, please also tweet us. We really love to, to kind of engage uh, with the customer base and understand the pain. Also, I will say use the feedback hub. We have an, actually a great node in there for DPI issues. And again, you know, we look very closely at the feedback we get there. Uh, we love to hear what's broken and, and so on. So that, that would be great. Anyway, thank you for joining us. Thank um, you very this much. This has been Build 2017 and the talk on DPI. Thanks.